another ministerial mishap with Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, Patricia Hayes, John Graham, Alexandra Dane, and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. In government service, there's a strong sense of comradeship. If the problem comes up, busy executives know they're all in the same boat and they're always ready to help each other out of it. So when a colleague seems to be flagging, discreet inquiries are made. Well, you seem depressed too. Have you braced it snapped again, or did your landlady give you too many prunes for breakfast? <laughs> well, if you must know, it's just that there's no money in the pity cash. It means I get no lunch again. Oh, well, let's see, wait a minute. Uh... Ah, wait a minute. Ah, uh, now, there is something there. Yes, the usual three Spanish potatoes, two trouser buttons, and a bad saying, switch me on, cheeky. <laughs> yes, well, I'm afraid it's an echo of the national problem. You know, we've all got to economize. I tried one, and I put up an idea the other day for saving on civil servants' traveling expenses. Splendid. What did you suggest? I said we should all stay at home. <laughs> They could send the papers to us and we'd have them permission to refuse. Oh, the permanent undersecretary won't buy that idea. No, he likes to come to London to get away from his wife. The only time he's homesick is when he's at home. <laughs> I've also been saving on shoe leather. I take longer strides when I walk. <laughs> but I still haven't got enough money. Don't oh, fuss too, please. I mean, we shouldn't be discussing our finances. It's the country we're supposed to be worrying about. Mm. Yes, I hear you've been appointed to the economic think tank. We have to study the state of the nation and suggest ways of putting a stop to it. And the government are extremely worried about the cost of living and the rampant inflation of its spouse. Ooh, what's that? It means prices and incomes chase each other around in ever-diminishing circles till they finally disappear up their own arbitration machinery. <laughs> Yes, and we're supposed to do something about it. The permanent undersecretary has told us to put our heads together and create an economic platform. Oh, by the way, Sir Gregory rang this morning. He wants to check who sent the voting form for the civil service duty contest. Oh, yes, yes. We dispatched them yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Sir Gregory seems quite keen on the project, isn't he? Well, beauty <laughs> contests are right up his alley, aren't they? I heard he was a judge at the local area hoop. Yes, he was trembling so much he nearly dropped his binoculars. <laughs> Why didn't you enter, Mildred? Oh, I knew I didn't have a chance. Sir Gregory always gives first prize to his fence water from the typing pool. Ah, but this year the others have voted him. There's a blonde girl from the Board of Trade, got it. Really? Mm. Angela Raver, her name is. Once the judges saw A. Raver printed on her card, she was away. <laughs> oh, yes, and now she's Miss Civil Service London, you see. And she's through to the national finals. Yes, well, I just hope someone's warned her about Sir Gregory and his unbridled lecherer. <laughs> oh, there you are. Oh, good morning, Sir Lecherer. There you Sir Gregory. <laughs> How are you, sir? Well, I thought. And Lady Pitkin? Dot nattering. I see, really. <laughs> oh, I mean, yes, of course, yes. Uh, stop nattering, too, please. Yeah, How are you yeah. getting on with these economic problems? Yeah. Well, you have been most impressed, Sir Gregory. We very nearly started. <laughs> The problem is urgent, remember. The PM is extremely concerned. Don't worry, sir. You'll soon be able to tell him what he can do. All right. In fact, you can go back to your office and relax right now, Sir Gregory. Oh, my word, yes. Oh, so you don't get rid of me as easily as that. I have another job for you both. Your wish is our command, sir. The ministry offices are absolutely filthy. Well, how funny you should say that. Oh, yeah. Too, it's funny that Gregory should say that. Yes, very funny. You know, we were saying that only, uh, oh, when was it? It was the other day, wasn't it? Of course it was yes. that. It was only the other day. We were saying how filthy the offices were. Yes, our windows are so filthy, we thought it was thick fog outside. Yes, yes we slept in the office for three nights, thinking the trains wouldn't run. Yes. <laughs> Have you quite finished, you two? Except to say, sir, you're absolutely right. The ministry offices are filthy. Yes. People don't seem to make much effort. I mean, your typewriter is covered in cobwebs, Miss Murphy. Oh, they think they're for years. <laughs> the trouble, Sir Gregory, is we, we just can't get the cleaners, you see. I mean, they stay a few weeks and then they go. And they're so casual. When I told the last one I could write my name in the dust on my desk, all she said was, isn't education wonderful? <laughs> Again, isn't it? I mean, they won't work here because they don't pay any now. Oh, nonsense. Now, I want this department to mount an advertising campaign. Yes, yes, sir, yes. Get more women cleaners. Yes, sir, yes. Use the national press. Yes, yes, yes. Point out that they'll be working for some of the country's top men. Me, for instance. You mean something like Sir Gregory Pickin needs a daily woman? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, not daily woman. You must make the job sound pleasant and attractive. Perhaps we should leave your name out of it, sir. <laughs> Just 
Find some cleaners Clean. and find some answers to our economic problem. And get on with it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we'd uh, better knock out an advert, too. And we must make the job sound exciting. See? Like Sir Gregory said. Well, what about explosions, yeah. sir? Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to go far, be a white or charm. Mm. Or even uh, catch a little bird. Earn extra cash. Don't be nervous. Become a scrubber in the civil service. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We don't want highbrow poetry. It might put them off. Well, what do you suggest, sir? No lady wants to be called a charm. I mean, we should advertise for uh, a cleaning expert. What a good idea. Now, let me think. Now, let me think. Now, want it. Cleaning expert for light governmental duties, ample facilities for sport. <laughs> that should attract the right sort of woman, doesn't it? More tea, Nobby. Oh, Tar. Don't mind if I do. Mmm. I'm enjoying this kipper. So I hear. Wouldn't mind having that other one from yesterday. There's only this little bit left. Next door's cat had it off the draining board. <laughs> oh. Very tasty, Kippers. Meal in themselves, I always say. Funny when you think they're just herring. Die the cause. <laughs> yes, of course. You couldn't eat them while they was alive, could you? <laughs> I've got a bit of bad news, Nobby. I lost my job today. I used to like a nice bloater, too. What, that Lily? You lost your job? At the university. But you've been cleaning up there for 40 years. That's what I told them. I said I'd never have taken it on if I'd have known it was only temporary. <laughs> You're one of their best cleaners. They called you Lightning Lil. I know, but now they say I'm redundant. At your age, you can't be. If you ask me, it's all these student sickings. The floors don't be polishing the more. <laughs> to save money. <laughs> Daft, I call it. Well, it's your economic crisis, isn't it? It's all them politicians. They've got no idea about to run the country. No idea. Well, you'd better find another job, Lil. You won't be able to afford your bingo, Elf. All your yoga classes. Here, give us the paper a minute. Let's have a look at the ads. Here you are. Your mum's bike went through there. Oh, yes, you can't beat a kipper, I always say. You can keep your champagne and your caviar. Here, Nobby, look at this. Hmm? They want a cleaning expert up the ministry in Whitehall. Well, you get yourself fixed up there, Lil. Could be a nice, cosy little number there. Yes, I'll drop them a line. And I'll go in and interview them tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> Children, <clears throat> that memo you typed for me yesterday has gone off. Oh, yes, sir. We copy it to all departments. Sit there. Sit there. I've just seen my copy, and I'd like to draw your attention to the last paragraph. Have I made a boo-boo? I think you could say that. I dictated, remember, he's a very important person. He is, after all, the minister. Look what you wrote. Remember, he's a very impotent person. <laughs> he is, after all, a monster. <laughs> No wonder the minister sounded so stroppy on the phone. I wish you wouldn't do these things, Mildred. It's bad for our images. Economic think tank. I'm sorry, sir. Where's it going, anyway? Well, Mr. Lamar, I keep driving ourselves on, you know. We have to, you see. I mean, we're the dynamo at the heart of government planning, the nation's powerhouse of financial strategy. Let's have a nice cup of tea. Good idea, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. I'll go and put the kettle on. Thank you. I'm trying to get some statistics. Statistics? I thought I could give Sir Gregory a breakdown. I really believe you could, too. <laughs> My friend, Mr. Crawley, is bringing us some books. <laughs> oh, creepy Crawley from next door. Yes. Uh, I'll talk to the devil. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Crawley. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, I've brought you a few reference books to help you with your economic what's-his-name. Oh, thank you very much. I hope you'll find them useful. Uh, those two were written specially for the civil service. Oh, may I see? Thank you. Uh, how to baffle the public with statistics. Oh, very useful, that, yes. Oh, and this could be even better. Facts and figures and how to twist them. Sir Gregory will be impressed when he sees us studying these. Loafing around reading books, eh? On the contrary, sir, we're engaged on a preliminary statistical survey. Say that again, lad. I doubt if I could, Sir Gregory. <laughs> we're working hard, sir, on the economic problem. Indeed. 
Well, your work so far has been execrable. Oh, thank you very much. However, you're about to get the help of an economics expert. I've just been lunching with a PM. Well, if he feels he can assist us, sir, we'd be prepared to listen to him, yeah? Now, be quiet, Lennox Brown. That PM won't be helping you. Oh. But he's been very impressed by Professor Bannister, the economics don at Middlepool University. He's invited the professor to advise the minister. Professor Bannister, is he coming here soon? He is the she, and she'll be coming down from Middlepool tomorrow. Wait a minute, I've heard of Professor Bannister, haven't I? Didn't she uh, get a lot of publicity recently? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, she's highly regarded in financial circles, of course, but in yes. the public, she's mainly known for her advanced thinking in uh, yes. sex in society. Oh, I remember. She was in that BBC Two program, Libido. Yeah. Talking about free love. Did you see it, Mr. Lamb? No, my lamb has switched it off. Well, she, uh, she feels that Puritan restrictions cause harmful neurosis, and she therefore advocates... Uh, Oh, she's a very interesting woman. Yes. You're trembling again, Sir Gregory. Uh, yes, well, uh, be that as it may, she's, uh, she's coming here to deal with economics and finance. She will advise on this and that, but not on the other. Uh, right, sir. Uh, she'll be in London for several days, and the PM wants her to have VIP treatment. What? He'd have met her himself, but he, he couldn't get sure leave. Oh. So, uh, you'll be meeting her then, soon? Uh, no, unfortunately, I have to leave early tomorrow. It'll be up to you two to receive Professor Bannister, get her views on the economic crisis, and whatever she says goes. Her word is law. We'll certainly make her welcome, Sir Gregory. Uh, no expense spared, of course. Remember, it's only public money. <laughs> I've confirmed the professor's hotel reservation. Ah, oh, you've got the penthouse suite at Plaza? That's right. Good. Ah, oh, she should be here soon. Now, oh, let's hope Mildred gets back from her interview in time to make her some tea. That is if she likes tea. What are you talking about, too? Everybody likes tea. Professor Bannister may not. She seems a pretty unorthodox character. Does she? Well, she must be. Talking about free love on the telly. Oh, nonsense. Two people say anything on telly. I read an article about her in this week's Women's World. She started mixed colleges at Middlepool University, you know. Yes, so I get that. Yes, yeah. boys and girls in the same building. Yeah. She says people can't get on with their work unless they get plenty of... Uh, see plenty of... Uh, the opposite... Well, uh, the thing is... Can you think I'll just say it's one? <laughs> I spent quite a lot of money on it, too. <clears throat> now, remember, remember, her private views are purely incidental. Yes. Professor Bannister is coming to us as the country's top economics expert. And watch it. You'll be here any moment. Oh, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, there was no one in the outer office, so I come straight in. Oh, good morning, madam. Yes, come in, my dear lady. Come in and sit down, won't you please? Let me get you a cushion. I take it, madam. You're the, uh, well, now, how shall I phrase this? The, uh, uh, the expert? Well, I should be. I've been at it long enough. <laughs> Indeed, yes. Well, my colleague and I were just talking about you. I worked at the university, please. Uh, yes, so we understand, yes. And now you're kindly giving your services to us. The government is extremely grateful. Oh, yes. The permanent undersecretary is delighted you'll be with us, and so are the minister and the PM. Men can't work properly without their comfort, can they? They need a woman to oblige them. I always say that. <laughs> no, I gather. Uh, I read in Woman's World. Uh, too, too. Oh. Uh, let's stick to business. At the university, I always give them a good start for the day. Uh, oh, uh, yes, yes, I'm sure. But uh, getting back to the matter in hand. And none of the gentlemen complained. And if you're not satisfied, you've only got to tell me. <laughs> Thank you. They had their money's worth up there, I can tell you. <laughs> you never pass a chance to harass me on the front steps every morning at six. <laughs> then I was at it in the corridors till nine. <laughs> yes, and sometimes I used to oblige them on the high table in the evening. <laughs> What our universities have come to. Oh, I never complained. It was an interest, really. Excepting that it was a bit wearing on the knee. <laughs> well, yes. That's the only way, isn't it? On the knee. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, of course, you, you realise uh, your ideas are, are rather modern. Modern? Modern. What, me? Yes. Not on your life. I mean, they offered me a long handle brush, but I said no. <laughs> you know, I don't want one. I prefer the old-fashioned method. Oh, 
I see. Yes. Well, we're very fascinated by all this matter, of course. We don't think we're not. But, I mean, what we're mainly interested in is your views, you see, on the country's economy. Yes. Can you tell us what to do with the cost of living? Not our part, Tom. Oh. <laughs> Just do give me the chance. I'll give you my view, don't you worry. Yes, splendid. But first, I think we should escort you to your hotel, you know? uh, As our secretary isn't back, perhaps we can have tea there. My hotel? Oh, we booked you a suite at the plaza. A suite? At the plaza? Well, of course, if you'd rather go somewhere oh, else. Oh, no, I'd... no, no. I think that'll be all right. He's very kind of you, I'm sure. Oh, well, not so, madam. No, no. I mean, we want to make certain you'll look after you, see? I mean, you're a very important person. Oh, well, it's nice to know someone appreciates us ladies who do. Uh, quite. <laughs> Have you much luggage with you? Luggage? No, I've only got my shopping bag. <laughs> Travelling light, eh? I don't know about light. There's four pounds of spuds in there and a packet of sprouts and a packet of frozen chippers. Really? Ah, oh, you're doing a spot of research. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't mean earlier, Bernard. My annual interview went on for ages. I told Miss Digby I should have a ride or know the reason why. Yeah, and she spent an hour telling me the reasons why. Well, I didn't get back till three. No, they aren't here. They left a note saying they'd taken this professor to the plaza. I'm sorry, I can't, love. I'm accepting a new child lady. Admin had a letter. She's coming this afternoon. Well, I've got to give her expenses, you see, and then I'll send her down to the old porter. He dishes out all the cleaning gear. Well, if she's here soon, we might get a cup of tea, off. Excuse me, I wonder if you could help me. Oh, with pleasure, madam. I'm Professor Bannister. Oh, yes, I saw your libido on the telly. They're expecting me in the general assistance department. Can you tell me where that is? It's up the end of the corridor, Professor, just next door to the what's his name. Thank you. But I'll have to hang up now. I can hear someone coming. It'll be the new cleaner. Here Is this the general assistance department? That's right, dear. I was expecting you. Come in. Thank you. I shall be helping you out for a few days. Oh, well, I hope you can stay longer than that. <laughs> We're in a shocking mess. So I gather. I see the job as a cleaning up operation. Oh, you can say that again. Now, you mind you don't leave paddles on the lino, won't you? I beg your pardon? Oh, and be extra careful in Mr. Lamb's office. He has bits of fluff on top of his cupboard. Really? Now, here's the money for your bus fares. We always keep that right away. That's fair. But I have my own car, you know. Oh, yes, you. <laughs> You're the secretary, I take it. Yeah, that's right, dear. I find your manner rather strange. I must say, in a top ministry office, one expects a little polish. Well, don't you worry. You get plenty of polish. <laughs> now, you can go and see Mr. Matthews in the front hall. Indeed. Yeah, he'll take care of you. Cool. Well, I must say, it's about time somebody did. Oh, pardon me for me, too. You're not tight to be a child, lady. Ah, Miss Mervyn. Oh, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Gregory. Well, I didn't get away as early as I planned so much to do, you know. But there's one little task kind of thing to you. Yes, sir. This civil service beauty contest, the finals are being held tomorrow, and Miss Civil Service London is dropping in this afternoon. Now, I had hoped to see her myself. I've been doing my best to uh, encourage her, but uh, I have to go now, so you'll have to see her and give her her travel voucher. How far is she going to go, sir? Well, I've not yet had a chance to find out yet. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, the, the, the finals are being held in, in, in North Wales at uh, Abadabba, in fact. Well, won't you be going up there, sir? The unfortunately, no. I, I have to take someone away for the weekend. Abroad? No, my wife, actually. <laughs> Anniversary, couldn't get out of it. Pity, Miss Raver looks good in a swimsuit, and I was hoping to see, to see more of her. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Sir Gregory. You're all trembling. Right. When Miss River comes in, give her my uh, best wishes. And tell her Sir Gregory Pitkin, MBE, is thinking of her. <laughs> yes, well, uh, carry on, Miss Muffin. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I've made another boo boo. Perhaps that was Miss Rainbow who came in just now. And I thought she was a char. Now, I hope you find this hotel comfortable, dear lady. Comfortable? It's 
like a blooming pally. He's just like in the pictures. I kept thinking I was seeing Fred Astaire dancing across the foyer. No, no, that was Mr. Lamb. He caught his shoelace in the revolving door. <laughs> Would you like another cup of tea? I wouldn't say no. I've no idea that working in watch always like this. Yes, now perhaps we could pick your brains over the cucumber sandwich. Oh, well, uh, I'll pick that will be all right, eh? Do you think I'd better make notes, John? Uh, yes, that's a good idea, too, if you want to. Sure. Now, uh, tell me, madam, uh, what do you see as the basic cause of our economic crisis? Eh? Oh, you mean, uh, not put the country up the south? <laughs> see, too. It goes straight to the heart of the matter. Well, it stands to reason, doesn't it? We all ought to get more pay. Ah, what a splendid idea. Yes, but there's just one small point there, isn't there? I mean, where would the extra money come from? Bingo. Yeah. Oh. Wait, bingo. That is your answer. So the government gets the blooming profits. Right, Joe, did you get that too? Yeah, yes. Uh, so the government gets the blooming profits. And then you get trained. They lose money every year, don't they? Cut them out. Scrap the railway. Scrap the railway? Yes. Scrap the whole lot at one go instead of bit by bit like what they're doing now. These right buttons. Think of the money we save. Saving, that's another thing. How can we save when your decimals will keep putting up your prices? That's a very good question, lad. Get yeah. rid of your decimals yeah. and we'll be all right. I'll make another rap, please. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Abolish decimal cutters. And the railway, yeah. remember. And the railway. And I'll tell you something else. Yes, yeah, well, we're all here, dear lady. Yes. What about your politicians, eh? Hmm? What do they do? Well, they sit in the house of them. Exactly. Couldn't get a proper job, sitting around all day. It's a living scandal. But you'll be doing something useful. Yes, but they have to attend debate. Well, let him do something useful as well. Politicians doing something useful? That is a revolutionary thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what can be done, madam, and your other point, of course, will be put in hand at once. <laughs> Oh, hello, Professor Bannister. Fancy bumping into you again. You saw Mr. Lennox Brown? No, I saw his secretary, who seemed very odd. And she sent me down to that roughly hall porter. Oh, yes. So oh, what's his name? And he had the impertinence to give me a bucket and a mop and a bar of soup. <laughs> Good gracious. Oh, whatever are they up to? That's what I'm about to find out, if you'll excuse me. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, it's, uh, it's you, then. It certainly is. And I want an explanation. I believe we've made some mistake. Do you know, I hope I have. I'm ever so sorry. I thought he was a new shark. A new shark? Well, I do apologize. Yes, to make for that. Oh, no. Mr. Whitley apologized all day. <laughs> but it's all right now. Sir Gregory came in and explained all about you. He sent his best wishes and told me to give you this travel warrant. Travel warrant? Yes, you're to go to North Wales straight away. I'm to go to North Wales? Yes, you have a gather. That's where it's all at him. We're depending on you. Well, if the permanent undersecretary wants me to go to North Wales, I suppose I'd better. But it seems rather odd. Did you have a pleasant weekend, Mr. Griggs? No, Lamb. I had an absolutely ghastly weekend. I had to take my wife back to our honeymoon hotel for our anniversary. Uh, these things mean a lot to the ladies, don't they? Yes, yeah, apparently. Would you believe she bought herself a new see-through nightie? Oh, I'm sure she looked charming. No, she did not. <laughs> she was wearing a flannel vest underneath. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> now then, have you been looking after this economics expert? Oh, we certainly had to Gregory. We took her to Covent Garden on Saturday night, the posh restaurant on Sunday, and she still thinks it is herself. Yeah, at fifty pounds a night she ought to be. Has uh, she given you advice on the economy? Oh, certainly has, sir, yes. She put forward several clear-cut ideas, all of which are being implemented. Good, good. I'm looking forward to meeting her. Ah, oh, here she comes now. Just getting out of the room. Yeah. What? What is it? That funny little woman who keeps prodding people with her umbrella? Yes, sir, sir. Thank you, sir. She is rather eccentric. But, but uh, I'm taking her out to lunch at the Monte Carlo. Yes. Here I am. How it's Tom and Jerry today, then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, well, very well, dear lady. Thank you. Uh, may I introduce um, the, the, the permanent undersecretary, Sir Gregory Pitkin? Oh, 
please sweat the flavor on children. Yeah, yeah. How do you, how, how do you do, madam? Oh, get away with you, you soul salt. Oh, give me a soul salt, eh? Oh, yes. Come on, then, tell him. Uh, yes, he's a uh, uh, soul salt. I'll see you later. <laughs> Mr. Gregory, I think the head waiter wants to have a word. Uh, excuse me, sir, Mr. Gregory Pitkin. Mr. Gregory Pitkin and the uh, a telephone call for you, sir. You may take it at the desk, sir. Um, very well. Uh, excuse me, madam. Affairs of state, no doubt. I like him, you know. What a lovely gift. He looks really extinguished. <laughs> Excuse me, but would Madam mind removing her feet from the table? Yes, I would mind. They're doing no harm. I'll put my shoes on. <laughs> I say, I wonder who's phony Sir Gregory. He's gone quite right and he's shaking all over. Nothing could have possibly gone wrong, could it? I'm beginning to wonder, too. He started chewing the telephone flex. <laughs> <laughs> he's hung up. He's coming back. Now then, you fool. What the devil has been going on? That was Miss Tibble Fairy London on the phone. She never got to have a devil at all. She spent the whole weekend scrubbing out the ministry. What? The hubby, that's my job. He sits on to put me out of work. Your job? I'm the cleaning expert around here. Cleaning expert? I answered the ad in the paper, didn't I? I think I'll take a problem in one. Well, Stay where you are, there. <laughs> Let's get this straight. You've been taking this woman's advice on the economy. And you've been putting it into it. Here is the news read by John Curl. There's been some confusion in Britain's transport system following the government's weekend axing of all British rail services. Commuters have been getting to London by walking along the disused railway line. There was an accident on Southern Region when a group of office workers marching from Brighton to London, ran into the rear end of a group of housewives walking from Croydon. <laughs> Several people were derailed, but no one was hurt. <laughs> Delays are expected on this line. London stations report this business on their first day as state bingo halls. Houston has a full house, but at Waterloo there are some vacancies for players on platform three. <laughs> as announced earlier, the Treasury has cancelled the use of decimal currency. A barter system has been substituted. The first to benefit were Midland car workers who opened today's pay packet to find they'd each received two fried loaves, a dozen eggs, and a balloon. <laughs> in the House of Commons, the new scheme for MPs to carry out useful tasks while listening to debates got off to a good start. Lady members are knitting and making rugs, while male MPs are doing basket work, carpentry, and bicycle repair. <laughs> the leader of the opposition said he was glad the government had at last got weaving. But the Prime Minister drew attention to the large number of ugly baskets on the opposition benches. Well, how we got away with that little lot, I'll never know. Oh, I think if one does one's best, you know, one's entitled to a little luck. Luck? That don't seem no good at all, you. The PM's delighted with Lily. She's been asked to stay on as government advisor. What about Paul Professor Bannister? Oh, did you hear, Mother? Oh, yes, she wants to be the contract. Yes, they're giving her a thousand pounds from the film contract. Yes, she's got great things in front of her. Of course, it was unfortunate about the railways, but we soon got them going again, and people appreciate them more now. They're doing better business than before. It just goes to prove one thing, Hildred. What's that, sir? You can fool all the people some of the time, and some of the people all the time. But to fool all the people all the time... Take a couple of experts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Muddling crew, as the men from the ministry, were Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. Also featured were Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham, Alexander Dane, and Patricia Hayes as Lily. The program was written by Edward Taylor and John Graham and produced by Edward Taylor. <laughs>
another ministerial mishap with Norma Ronalds, Ronald Baddeley, Patricia Hayes, John Graham, Alexandra Dane, and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. <laughs> In government service, there's a strong sense of comradeship. If the problem comes up, busy executives know they're all in the same boat and they're always ready to help each other out of it. So when a colleague seems to be flagging, discreet inquiries are made. You seem depressed too. Have your braces snapped again or did your landlady give you too many prunes for breakfast? <laughs> well, if you must know, it's just that there's no money in the pity cat. It means I get no lunch again. Oh, let's see, wait a minute. Uh... Ah, wait a minute. Ah, uh -huh, now there is something there. Yes, the usual three Spanish potatoes, two trouser buttons, and a bad saying, switch me on, cheeky. <laughs> yes, well, I'm afraid it's an echo of the national problem. You know, we've all got to economize. I tried one, and I put up an idea the other day for saving on civil servants' travelling expenses. Splendid. What did you suggest? I said we should all stay at home. <laughs> well, they could send the papers to us, and we'd have them permission to you. Oh, the permanent undersecretary won't buy that idea. No, he likes to come to London to get away from his wife. The only time he's homesick is... When is it home? <laughs> I've also been saving on shoe leather. I take longer strides when I walk. <laughs> but I still haven't got enough money. Don't fuss too, please. I mean, we shouldn't be discussing our finances. It's the country we're supposed to be worrying about. Mm. Yes, I hear you've been appointed to the economic think tank. We have to study the state of the nation and suggest ways of putting a stop to it. And the government are extremely worried about the cost of living and the rampant inflation of a spiral. Oh, what's that? It means prices and incomes chase each other around in ever-diminishing circles till they finally disappear up their own arbitration machinery. Yes, and we're supposed to do something about it. The permanent undersecretary told us to put our heads together and create an economic platform. Oh, by the way, Sir Gregory rang this morning. He wanted to check who sent the voting forms for the civil service duty contest. Oh, yes, yes. We dispatched them yesterday. Uh, <laughs> Sir Gregor seems quite keen on the project, isn't he? Well, beauty contests are right up his alley, aren't they? I heard he was a judge at the local area too. Yes, he was trembling so much he nearly dropped his binoculars. <laughs> Why didn't you enter, Mildred? Oh, I knew I didn't have a chance. Sir Gregory always gives first prize in his fence water from the typing pool. Ah, but this year the others have voted him. The little blonde girl from the Board of Trade got it. Really? Yeah. Angela Raver, her name is. Once the judges saw A. Raver printed on her card, she was away. Oh, yes, and now she's Miss Civil Service London, you see. And she's through to the national finals. Yes, well, I just hope someone's warned her 